Hello, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews, the very best NCLEX review in the business, in my opinion. It's a three-day review that you can take live or online on demand. So you can go to clinicreviews.com to sign up for the online on demand, or you can also take it live in person. This is December 5th. This is the day I'm recording it. And I have an upcoming review for me, Dr. Sharon, three days in LA. Um, Mark Klimek has some coming up in Ohio, um, or you can do the online on demand. Thank you to all of our channel members. Uh, we really do appreciate your membership and you're supporting our channel in that way. We have great members. We have great subscribers. You can also go to klimekreviews.com. You see the banner along the bottom if you want to sign up for next gen tutoring with me. It's uh, a three hour online uh, tutoring that you can do with me if you have are concerned about the next gen questions that you're going to get. So today we are going to do heparin. Now, I have had people say to me, Sharon, will you do math tutoring with me? And I always say, no, I won't do math tutoring with you because you really can't fail NCLEX just on math questions. I have people tell me all the time they got zero math questions on the NCLEX. So there is a chance you could get zero math questions. You, I've heard people say as many as four math questions. That's the most I've ever heard of, and that's unusual. Um, so today we're going to talk about heparin. Just in case you get a heparin question on the NCLEX, we are primarily an NCLEX prep channel. However, if you don't get any heparin questions on the NCLEX, this is also going to help you on bedside nursing if you care for patients who are getting heparin infusions. So a number of years ago, because of all the heparin infusion errors that were being made. I don't know who, who proclaimed this. I don't know if it was a hospital association or centers for Medicaid, Medicare. I don't know who did it, but they decreed that all heparin infusion concentrations would be a hundred units per mil. So every single bag that comes from pharmacy, if you're going to hang it as a heparin infusion, the concentration will always be a hundred units per mil. So for example, you could get a, a hundred mil bag. It has 10,000 units in a hundred mils. That's still a concentration of a hundred units per mil. Well, how do I know that? Well, because you take your calculator and you go 10,000, 10,000 divided by a hundred, that's a hundred. You could have a 250 mil bag, 25,000 units and 250 mils. So 25,000 divided by 250. Guess what? That's still a hundred. 50,000 units divided by 500. That's still 100. Okay, so the concentration is always 100 units per mil, whether it's a 100 mil bag, a 250 mil bag, or a 500 mil bag. It's always a concentration of 100 units for every mil that's in the bag, no, ma no matter how many mils are in there. That's always going to be the concentration. And that's going to determine how you calculate the rate for your patient. So what they'll do is they'll give you an order. They'll say, start it at some number of units per hour. Pretty common starting rate is a thousand units per hour. That's pretty common starting rate. Well, we want to know mils per hour for programming the pump, right? So if we want to convert units per hour to mils per hour, all we do is move the, the decimal over two points. So if you look at the thousand units, 10 mils, you just took a thousand units the decimal point is at the end of a thousand, right? You move it over two and that gets you to 10 mils and you move it over two because the concentration is a hundred to one. And when the concentration is a hundred to one, in order to convert something at that hundred level, you move the decimal over two points. So that means we would start the heparin at a 10 mils per hour. So if they say start the rate at a thousand units per hour, you start the rate at 10 mils per hour. You don't even have to do any math, y'all. So if you get a heparin infusion question on the NCLEX, it doesn't even require math. All you have to know is that the concentration is 100 to 1. Whatever the rate is, you move the decimal over two points, and that's the rate. So if it's a 2,000 unit per hour start, start the heparin infusion at 2,000 units per hour. We want to know mils per hour for programming the pump. To convert units per hour into mils per hour, we move the decimal over two points, 2,000 units move the decimal over two points, you get 20 mils. So starting it at 20 mils per hour. If the order says start the heparin infusion is at 1,560 units per hour, we need to know mils per hour for programming the pump. So we convert units 
per hour into mils per hour by moving the decimal two over to the left. So 1560, and you move the decimal over, you get 15.6. Now in the US and Canada, the IV pumps go out one decimal point. So you can actually program it in at 15.6. However, if they ask you to round because 0.5 and above, you go round up, 0.5 and above, you round up. If they ask you to round, you take it up to 16, but uh, they shouldn't ask you to round up for heparin because you can, the IV pumps go out by one decimal point. Let's say they tell you to start the heparin at 2,620 units per hour. To program the pump, we need mils per hour. So we convert units to mils. So 2,620, move the decimal over. It's 26.2. So we started at 26.2. If they ask you to round, which they shouldn't do, but the two is under five. So we round it down to 26. Now, if you're like, I'm not getting this, Dr. Sharon, then just rewatch it again until you do get it. Okay. All right. Now, let's say they're asking you to titrate it. And this shouldn't be on the NCLEX. You should not get a titration question on the NCLEX. But if you do, you'll know how to answer it. Um, however, you could definitely get asked this question in real life, right? So they, they tell you to start the drip at 1,200 units per hour. Okay. So you get the patient. Now, they usually tell you to give a bolus as well, but we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to say, okay, give them a bolus and then start it at 1,200 units per hour. And you go, okay, so what rate am I going to look do? Am I going to start this at? Don't even look at the titration because you know what rate to start it at. And it's always, y'all, always, it's a safety issue. It is a national mandate that all heparin bags come at a concentration of 100 units per hour. So we know, even not knowing what bag we have, we know we're starting that drip rate at 12 mils per hour. So we give them the bolus, start it at 12 units or 12 mils per hour. And then we always recheck the PTT in six hours. Okay, so we started at 12, six hours after starting the infusion, the PTT is drawn and it measures 41. So what's the new rate now where we have to look at our titration uh, scale here? So the PTT between 40 and 49, you increase the heparin by 100 units per hour and repeat the PTT in six hours, 100 units per hour. To convert that to mils per hour, you move the decimal over two points. So 100, move the decimal over two points. That's one. Move it over to the left. 100 changes to one when you move the decimal over two points. So do you know what my new rate is? My new rate is 13. 100 units per hour is the equivalent of one mil per hour because the concentration is always 100 to one. Now. It also says repeat the PTT in six hours. So let's repeat the PTT in six hours. Six hours later, the PTT is 65. So what's the new rate? Well, let's see. The PTT between 50 and 69, maintain the same heparin rate and repeat the PTT at 6 a.m. the next day. Okay, so what's the rate? Well, I'm not supposed to change it. So my rate is 13 still. I didn't change it. And I'm going to put in an order to draw the PT tomorrow morning. Okay, we only check it after in six hours after we do a rate change. So 6 a.m. the next day, the heparin is infusing at 13 mils per hour because that's what we're at, right? 13 mils per hour. So 6 a.m. The next morning, the PTT is 85. Well, let's look at our sliding scale between 80 and 89. We have to turn off the heparin for one hour, then restart it by a rate of 100 units per hour less than the current rate. 100 units per hour less and repeat the PTT in six hours. So I would have to go in and turn off the, the pump. I would just turn it off for an hour. I'd have to keep track of that. Start your little timer on your phone or on your iWatch or something like that. Remind yourself when it goes off, oh, I got to go turn that heparin back on. But what am I going to turn it back on at? I'm going to turn it back on at 100 units per hour less. So 100 units equals one mil because the concentration is always 100 to one. So I'm going to turn it down by one mil per hour. So it was running at 13. I'm going to turn it back down to 12 when I turn it back on. If you don't understand this, y'all just go back and rewatch this video. Okay. So let me test you here. You're caring for a client admitted with a non-STEMI who is to be starting on a heparin drip at 1500 units per hour. 
The pharmacy sends a heparin bag with a concentration of 25,000 units and 250 mils. The patient weighs 80 kg. At what rate will the RN start the heparin? Okay, you don't even have to do any math and don't let that kg confuse you. We don't, it's not a kg concentration. It's not kg concentration, okay? It's at 100 units per hour. So all we have to do, because 25,000 units divided by 250 mils is 100 to 1. So all we have to do is move the decimal point over 2, and it's 15 mils per hour. 15 mils per hour. Okay, well, I that is the end of this one. I hope you have a better understanding of heparin drips now. Whether you need to know it for NCLEX or not, you will use it in real life, and it's a good skill to have. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, and I'll see you later. Bye.